The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of Into the Pit or the Vibes Broadcast Network. The show is intended for mature audiences. Please welcome your host, Coyote Knight. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another Tuesday, another episode of Into the Pit. Of course, I'm your host, Kyle Yates, and we have my co-host, Mr. Rodney Williams, and our very special guest. Yay, Yay, Rodney. And our very special guest, Tina Storer. If you've ever watched Ghost Bait, she's one of the stars. And hi, Miss Tina. Hello, thank you for having me on. Oh, thank you for agreeing to put up with two nuts like me and Rodney. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so one of the main things that people want to know, what got you into the paranormal? Love that question. Uh, so I have been, I want to say, like, just touched by the paranormal my whole life. Um, I had my first paranormal experience when I was 14 years old. I heard a voice in my ear in my grandmother's house, um, really breathy, whispery. Um, I believe it said, yes, like this eerie, I could still hear it in my ear. Um, and it scared the bejesus out of me. And truth be told, I was afraid of my own shadow back then. So I didn't really want to dive deeper into that. It wasn't until I was probably like 21 years old that I finally kind of dove into the paranormal and wanted to conquer that fear and I sure did because here I am like almost 10 years later helping other people conquer their fears. Wow so you joined your first team when you were 21? I did yeah, yeah. in Massachusetts and then I've just been kind of on my own for a little while as well. Uh, they, they still going now or is it disbanded? I think so yeah I'm not sure uh, <laughs> but I've been, as I said I've been on my own for a while so I'm not sure. Yeah so um, how did you get involved with with the show? With the show. So Bob and I, we were Facebook friends for quite a few years. But it was kind of like everyone in the paranormal, how you have virtual friends and you just kind of connect in the community. And we had friends of friends and mutual people. And, um, you know, he is the creator of the show. And um, it was a little web series back in the day. And it did have a little bit of time on the bio channel as well back in 2013. And when Travel Channel approached him um, about kind of resurfacing the show, uh, rebooting it, um, my name came up a bunch of times within production and through him. And I like to say it cosmically happened and it just all <laughs> fell into place. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. It totally, totally does. Okay, so <laughs> my, our buddy uh, Darren wants to know, what is the holy grail, the paranormal to to you, evidence or personally? Okay, as in that I've experienced myself or have, like... I, I suppose it's what you've experienced yourself. Sure. Um, I think this case that I'm going to talk about is going to cover, like, so many different questions, but um, that would have to be down in Georgia. Um, what we kind of dubbed, I personally dubbed the Demon House, um, where we had... Um, Karen, Karen, the psychic, join us as well. Um, there was this property where the gentleman's great-grandmother placed a hex on um, a woman who her husband was having an affair with. And she nailed a picture of her to the, the tree out front. And this place was also um, Native American burial grounds. There were ley lines, running water. It was just this recipe for paranormal disaster. Essentially, but when we were down there filling with ghost bait, I I feel like I we are all pieces of human equipment, so we witness sometimes what equipment doesn't pick up. But I was picking up exactly what the psychic was also picking up before and after, and I saw this orange dude between two camera guys as we were filming, and I can only describe him to have this like goblin type face, kind of what you would see in Lord of the Rings. You know, um, just this really nasty looking face and just kind of just give me this come hither finger like gesture to me and that was horrifying and um, 
we in shortly after Bob did capture this small figure in the same area on the thermal imaging device as well. It was nice. Pretty, it, it's amazing to get confirmation digitally of what you're experiencing yourself. So Rodney, did you have something? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm telling you right now, I haven't finished watching the first season. I'm about halfway through with it. And so far, you and Bob are probably the most even keel, uh, uh, calm investigators I have ever seen on TV. Um, th there was one episode, uh, I think, and you're like, yeah, something just grabbed my hand. Yeah, I feel it right here next to me. And it's like, yeah, you're not, you're not overreacting. You're reacting to it. But you're not freaking out. You're not just like dramatizing it, like as in some other people uh, <laughs> seen on other paranormal TV shows. Um, Dude, and, and, and bro, I was kind of like, uh, all right. I never really, uh, yeah. Dude, bro. Dude, bro. See that? <laughs> um, I, I've never seen. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, okay, I never really watched it. Let me just watch one of the episodes, and all I did was one episode to watch you guys. And yeah, I'm like, I've been kind of whenever I get a chance, you know, from working up, you know, my, my, two my two jobs, you know, I'll binge watch it. And I know there's, I'm only like I said halfway between, in halfway in your first season, but you guys, I I really admire how you guys invested it. I've been looking. I gotta find a show that I need to watch, and I, I, I guess it was like you said, it was fake or what? You put you two together because you guys are you guys are really good. And my one question I do have is, if anybody has watched it, they probably want to know what's going on with the bag, that burlap bag. What is the story behind that, or is it you know, just? Yeah, grabbed at the last minute, or, or or what was going on? Right. Now that is the the hot question uh, and we always get. And you know, like I said, Bob is the creator of the show. This this immersion therapy concept really has been around since um, it, it's used in the like conventional therapy. And, and Bob is a um, licensed. I, I don't know if it's a licensed therapist, but he has a degree in psychology he was a practicing therapist and counselor and um the hood the burlap hood have been around since the beginning of the web series um he said he hasn't actually told me but there is a story behind where the actual fabric is sourced from but nobody knows it um but burlap was chosen because for multiple reasons one yes it is scary it is freaky and there is a method to the madness where we, we do want people to feel comfortable and safe, but also have that fear factor where we're raising their energy and using that energy to draw out whatever entities are there so they can finally confront them in a controlled environment. And Gorlap is great because you can kind of see through it a little bit and it forces you to rely on your other senses. So rather than trying to fill in the blanks, you are forced to tap into your, like, what are you hearing? What are you feeling? What emotion, right. where are you sensing it? And you'd be surprised what people can actually like see without being able to vis visually see. That makes sense. Oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, what's plans for another season? Uh, no word right now. No, no word right now, but uh, <clears throat> as soon as I know anything, you guys will also know. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, who can we who can we bombard with phone calls to uh, get you guys back on for a second season? Because I really enjoy it. <laughs> can we buy our travel channel? <laughs> um, All right. I say we'd be doing it, and um, yeah, just let them know, give them calls, tweets, emails. Oh, we'll bug the hell out of them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, any other plans for any other shows or? you know, guest appearances, anything like that? Not at the moment. Uh, I'm totally open to it. Um, at the moment, I'm, I'm planning a wedding. <laughs> um, but I'm also, you know, I, I am, apart from being a, a paranormal investigator, I am an actress. 
and a singer and voiceover artist and like a thousand different fun performing arts things and my fiance and I we have a YouTube channel and we write sketch comedy and we perform together so it's that's also why I love the paranormal as well because I get to use that like performance sometimes um, on investigations whether like I'm at an old theater and I'll, I'll like sing to try to like conjure up the ghost or something and try to like reenact some feelings or something but um, I just try to like live life and have as much fun as possible and I'm just kind of seeing what the next step is you know try to help people as well. Oh yeah that's what we got into it for was to help people. Um, do you feel like there's a lot of people on television that are just doing it for the fame? There's a lot of people just in life that do things for the wrong reasons, and I think it was really refreshing to be working with Bob and the entire crew and, like, Travel Channel and Indigo. Like, they really stress, like, to be authentic, to be ourselves, and we, I know, like, it was a controversial, um, it's a controversial method, you know, definitely, um, but we went into it with really good intentions and a good heart and a lot of we were very genuine about it and authentic and i think that's what kind of people crave in this in this world especially where a lot of stuff is maybe over dramatized or maybe <laughs> possibly <laughs> fictional evidence you know there's a lot of that out there but as long as you're doing things with a good heart that that's going to shine through all the bs mm -hmm. So yeah, when well, some people kind of complain that we don't put a lot of evidence on our our social media, but in, unless we're just totally 100% in agreement, then we won't present anything. So that's why we don't have a whole lot. I'm I'm very critical of everything. Um, it seems that's the way y'all are too, correct? Very much, and I think that it's quality over quantity. You know, keep your integrity. You don't, you don't have to be getting something every single moment of every single investigation, and if any true paranormal investigator would know that, but also any investigator would know that sometimes you really can't capture what you've experienced because, like I said, we are just walking pieces of human equipment, and sometimes a recorder cannot capture what you just saw with your very own eyes. And Science hasn't caught up to our extreme, amazing, intuitive skills yet. For sure. You wouldn't happen to have headphones, would you? I do. I would just have to get up for a second. If that, that's happens. fine. We're getting a little bit of feedback. Gotcha. Be right back. Now. Sure. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Rodney, you got anything coming up soon? Uh, I... Do I might have me a some fell down over here by me. There's a bad storm going on, getting ready to hit because oh, uh, bad chop storm. So, but uh, yeah, I might have an investigation coming up this weekend, but uh, waiting on confirmation from the band. Uh, so, and definitely though, got my tours coming up. They're starting to book up in the month of October. All my uh, store ghost stories out there in Montgomery, Texas. So, Montgomery. Montgomery, Texas. So, everybody can go yeehaw with a glass of wine. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's a glass of moonshine. But, uh, <laughs> with a glass of moonshine, too. I do that, too. Hell yeah. But, uh, Some beer. Some yeah. star nah, beer. I, 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 I guess once you get her headphones set up, but I will tell you, though, yeah, on the uh, travel channel, I mean, I, I'm watching stuff on demand, uh, that goes great show, and uh, I, coming from a person also, and I, I mentioned this before, uh, taking acting lessons, been doing theater and acting since I was a kid, up through, you know, you know, young adult, early 20s, uh, the way I watch how their reactions are on that on the ghost bait is really genuine. Everybody's reaction, even with the uh, clients, the bait, the bait, uh, they do the uh, bait night. Uh, their, their reaction when they first mention it to them, you know, and you're seeing that, that's like, yeah, that's not rehearsed. Yeah. That's what people can't see is like the copious amounts of sweat. Um, just, <laughs> I'm yeah. so nervous for them, and, you know, you kind of get that, um, 
imposter syndrome where like who am I to be like doing this to people <laughs> or like who am right. I to help people but I realized like I've been through that before where I was afraid of my own shadow I whenever people like found out that I was in the paranormal they're like you Tina Storer are in the paranormal you're like afraid of your own shadow <laughs> um, but so that's why I felt like I really could help them because I was afraid and I still get afraid definitely I see things in my apartment all the time and I, I have experiences, um, new medium skills that are just kind of appearing out of nowhere. Um, but like, that's why I, I felt for these people. And every time we presented them with the solution of, you know, why they need to be vague, and it was a different um, scenario each time. And we, we took so hours and days to really like, all right, we have the end result of what we know we need to do. But we need to really just think about why where's going to be what's the best location in the house how can we present this to them that's going to make it quick for them we put so much time and effort and a lot of thought into every single individual case sometimes it would be two people place them where like mess with some audio and different triggers like that because we were there to help people at the end of the day but i'm not gonna i i would get freaked out but i'm not gonna over react and like you said what you see is what you get on that show we didn't want to right. overdo it yeah oh exactly is it better there's a house a um a little bit better we're still getting a little bit of echo from rodney um but i imagine the weather has a lot to do with it and by the way send some yeah. of that rain our way because we need it very badly um darren wants to know if you come across the full body apparition who would you want it to be and what would you say <laughs> okay who would i want it to be well i personally as of right now i want it to be doris day because she just oh. passed away and she's like my favorite ever my favorite performer singer actress ever and i would just what i would say i would just say thank you so much for inspiring me to be happy and filling my life with your beautiful voice. I just want to thank her and express that gratitude and maybe some family members and just say hello and ask questions. You could say, que sera, sera. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Whatever will be, will be. One of my favorite coffee mugs we have. <laughs> Tea mug. Yeah. And Darren also wants to know what's your favorite piece of equipment? Ooh. So besides, like, besides your. Besides your fiance, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I, oh my God, he's, <laughs> I'm trying to get him to go on one. He's been on one, and he's really open to it, but I think he's just secretly afraid. Um, my favorite piece of equipment would definitely have to be an obelisk. Um, I just love that it's real time. You're using words. It scares the crap out of me when I get just like these. I've had the obelisk like change inflection, like use a creepier voice when it said murder. It was just. It was horrifying, so I love the obelisk. So where's that one place that you haven't been that you really want to go to? Oh, um, I, think I, I know it's like such a cliche, but I feel like Bobby Mackey's is somewhere that I really want to go. Oh my God. I think, yeah, it'd be really horrifying, but if you're a being of light, you're protected. So but I know it's a paranormal-like bucket list, you know? Oh yeah. So let's see it. Let's talk a little bit more about you. Um, let's, uh, you know, get away from the show and that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, you, you're intuitive, that kind of thing. Can you explain, you know, those, the different abilities you have and, you know, let's just go from there. Sure. Sure. Um, I definitely, they kind of called me like an empathic investigator. I think a lot of us, take on just whatever, I don't know how to describe it. I feel like I'm like an energetic sponge where if there's been past suicides in a location, I've, I've had that feeling of sudden suicidal thoughts or um, if there's a smoker that died from lung cancer, I've had a hard time breathing. Um, I don't like to call myself a psychic or medium, but I have psychic and medium skills sometimes. It's not like a consistent thing where I could be like, Long Island media. I'm like, hey, you, your grandfather says hello. Um, but uh, lately I've been having weird downloads of different family members visiting me when I'm trying to sleep. And I have to just like write down things. And 
basically just had my great grandfather visit me and I like wrote everything down. I didn't know who he was, but my mom was like, Oh my God, like this person, I was like, they had a dog named Penny and all this stuff. And she was able to confirm all that. So it's very, very new, like last week new. Uh But I definitely, yeah, I just, I, I tap into my intuition, my, like the, the universe. I'm very into, um, like the law of attraction, law of manifestation, and just kind of tapping into my own powers. And I want to help people do that as well, because once you become very self-aware of your own energetic field and what you're putting in and out and what you're putting into your energy and what you are emitting, it expands your energy field. And once you expand and become aware of your energy field, then you become so intuitive and you're able to detect other people's energy fields and like it just keeps growing and growing and growing so that's kind of what i'm working on at the moment if that makes sense <laughs> oh yeah so have you read the secret oh yes i i've read the secret seen the movie i, I love gabby bernstein dr wayne dyer abraham hex i really love um katherine zankina manifestation babe she's awesome i actually want to become i actually my goal at the moment is a very new venture, but like I want to help teach the law of attraction and manifestation and tapping into your own powers and intuition. That's something that's on the very close horizon. Yeah, I used to do videos daily on Instagram about the laws of attraction and stuff. I kind of got away from it because of, mm-hmm. uh, well, I was going through depression again and that kind of thing. and. Um, I'll have to say I was very impressed with you because you got on Instagram and, and you were very transparent about the things you were going through. Do you, do you want to talk about it? Of course. I am an open book. You know, I do struggle with, um, I have bouts of depression and anxiety my entire life since I can remember. And it's something that, uh, it kind of crept on, crept up back to me, uh, recently. And I think I was trying to, I think I was kind of in denial and, um, I like to share my story because I know there's somebody out there that needs to hear that and to know that they're not alone. And, but instead of repressing or shunning away these negative thoughts and feelings that I've been having and, you know, not feeling good enough or just kind of feeling lost and stuck, it's, um, something that I want to embrace, you know, really just dive into it and, let myself feel these feelings instead of pushing them down because I, I think it's in um, the big book in AA where they talk about like when while you're getting sober like your addictions out in the parking lot doing push-ups just getting stronger and I apply that to basically any negative emotion like if you don't face it just like ghost state that's why I love the, the concept of the show but like if you don't face your fears those doubts those negativity those things that are you know weighing you down if you repress them and try to just be like, no, I'm happy, happy, happy. They're out there doing push-ups, and when, the next time they come back, they're going to kick your ass. So might as well face them right then and there and work through them, go through it with grace and ease, or sometimes it's not so graceful, but you just got to do it and trust and have faith that it's all going to be okay. So that's kind of where I am in my journey right now, just deep diving, blind faith with the universe, God, whoever you call your higher power. And it's, it's changed my whole outlook. I, I feel like I've been letting go a lot and just going with the flow and becoming this like super attractor. It's been amazing. Well, one thing I learned is just because you've decided to change, it doesn't mean the rest of the world's decided to change. Exactly. And that's something um, I definitely, the lesson I've learned Um, just through whatever venture I've been on, um, you have to realize that you have to meet people where they are in their journey and you have to love them no matter what, even if you have different points of views in the world, political, dietary, everything. It, you just, you are one, the law of oneness declares like what I do to myself, I do to others. And it's the golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated, whether we're all neighbors and friends and brothers and sisters and, I can only love because that's what I want to put out and I want to get back is love. Exactly. I mean, that's one reason why that when I reach out to other groups and, and uh, we like to 
put whatever they're doing on our page and help promote them. You know, it's the karma thing. If you do for yeah. others, then they'll normally do for you as well. And, uh, you know, another thing is, is I don't believe that there's any one true team out there that's the best. We're all still learning. And uh, I like to share, you know, if there's something that I have got that you can use, by all means, go for it. And, you know, I'd like to yeah. hear the way somebody else does. To, you know, I'm sure you feel the same way. Agreed. It's, um, we're all in this together. I know there was like a movement like quite a few years ago, like paranormal unity and like para unity. And I, I think that's should be celebrated that, okay, there's a point that the paranormal, we don't have the answers. No one's an expert. Just, just maybe more experience and, um, you know, new familiarity, but we don't know. At the end of the day, we're all just kind of guessing and going with the flow. So all we can do is just like celebrate one another, cut off the drama and judgment. <laughs> and like, we're all in this together. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to like go far, go together. So that's my, my, my preaching moment there. <laughs> oh no, you know, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed but I feel like there's too much bickering and bullying out there in the paranormal world. I've experienced so much of it back in the day, and I honestly couldn't even say, like, oh, yeah, there's so much of it happening right now because I honestly don't even pay attention. Like, I, I focus on, I don't say it, like, selfishly, but, like, I focus on myself, make sure that I'm doing good things, I'm using social media, my voice, everything for love and positivity. Am I perfect? No. Have I always been like that? No. I was a complete a-hole and a biatch on social media at one point, but I woke up and I changed. We're all capable of change. You just have to kind of become self-aware and um, just like, I don't know, when I dealt with negative people on social media, I don't even respond anymore. I don't even ask if they exist. You know, they, I, I'm not energetically available for that. That's what I call myself. So do you get a lot of trolls? Um, definitely during the, when Ghost Street was airing season one, that was, I think I thought I was like prepared for um, online like negativity and it got to me a little bit at first, like I think the first couple episodes, but at the end of the day, people are gonna like what they're gonna like and they're not gonna like what they don't like. It's, you know, sweat off my back. I love the, I think it's Dita Von Teeth, where she says, you could be the ripest, juiciest, most delicious peach in the world, and there's still going to be people that don't like peaches. Yep. That's it. Love her. I'm here for the people that do like me, and I'm here for the people that I like. That's it. Anyone else? Whatever. <laughs> so did, is there a lot of that kind of bickering and stuff going on, on like through the television uh, teams? I don't, I honestly... Couldn't tell you. Um, I, we had, I know at Ghost Bay, our road family, we were so tight. We were so positive and we really cared about each other. And it was so much fun. And like, I miss filming just because they're, they're just awesome guys. And I actually have like a producer friend coming out in like next month and we'll meet up for coffee or something. Oh, yeah. We did yeah. a television show a few years ago where we were building bars. And <laughs> anyway, they, you know, not only are they following you around with a camera all day, but you got that stupid microphone stuck on you. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> and one of the things we learned is make sure you turn it off before you go to the bathroom. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they couldn't find me at one point. I think I had to go pee in between that. You know, so when you're doing interviews, like, they, you have to do it in multiple takes. Um, so like I had to go pee once and I don't think they shut it off on me, but a spider came out and the sound guy, like, they're like, where's Tina? And I just heard a scream over the ISP. And I was just like, are you kind of listening to me? They're like, are you okay? They thought it was like a, a paranormal. I'm like, no, it's just a spider. <laughs> Ghosts are fun, but insects, I'm, I'm all set. Thank you. <laughs> Roddy, you look like you got something to say. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just, uh, it's just, uh, it's just funny because there's, I could count how many, I don't know, you and I, Kyle, 
and Michelle you go on the investigations and we have other guests or we'll have other people go with us or we'll go have a work with another can there are some of these guys they're big bad early football player you know grizzly bear looking guys i've i've heard them scream like little girls when they see a roach and uh oh yeah they will freak out and it's amazing. It's, it's funny. I, to me, I just, you put up such a good front. I would have never known that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I didn't say, you know, three. So that, that, I'm just going off of that. Just, that, just they reminded me of that. And it was kind of funny. So yeah, but I'm then sure you get, like, oh, yeah, you, you get <laughs> that with so, like the, the, the incense, but then you get like, you ho I posted ghost tours as well, and you get the, the big guys are like so tough. Then all of a sudden something happens, and the first ones like jump into my arms. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I see how it is. Okay, <laughs> big tough guy. That's do you, fine. Ever, do you ever watch Ghost Brothers? <laughs> I never got to watch it. Truthfully, I don't have cable. I got cable just for Ghost Bait, and I, I, I do. I watch it through like PlayStation View. I'm an actress in New York, you know, and I gotta save the budget, you know. I hear you. <laughs> but, I, I saw, like, their, like, online clips, and I just thought they were awesome. Oh, they're hilarious. Yeah. We had Marcus the, the on the show. The paranormal needs that. You know, don't take ourselves so seriously. Like, guys, oh, we're sitting God. around in the dark talking to ourselves at the end of the day. No? Yeah. <laughs> we need some humor. As long as it's respectful, that's all I care about. Before we joined Paranormal Buzz Radio, we had Marcus Harvey on the show. And he was so funny. We liked to not got through the, the whole interview. Jen. But he, very uh, oh yeah, very genuine guy. Not politically correct, by the way, Not which I, I loved. <laughs> uh, yeah. And you know, it's, they all talk tough before they're going into the investigation. Oh yeah, we're going to go in there. We're going to get these ghosts and something happens. They're like, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I missed out by not being able to watch that but i like i said i've seen some of the clips on like social media and i'm like these guys well deserved that's we need you need a lot of like variety in this field you know some people like the more dramatic stuff and that was like i'm a very bubbly person but like i had to really kind of reserve myself um with ghost pages because it's the nature of the show you want to be respectful of people's very real fears but i'm like usually when it's like not helping a client like i'm Balls to the wall, <laughs> trying to make things like very energetic. And it's a lot of fun at the end of the day, you know. Oh yeah. Um, now, have you ever tried provoking in any of your investigations? No, I don't believe in it. I I, I don't think it's respectful. And I know some people have accused Bob and I of provoking, but I think. Um, inviting versus like provoking is is different like we didn't have the clients like call out to them for no reason just being like jerks and stuff like we had them like call out to them to confront them as like i hate when i see people go in there go into these like locations and just like start instigating these spirits and the people that reside there and for no reason like just to kind of show drama and like start swearing i'm like yo these people were like somebody's like relatives that, that's a grandmother potentially or um i don't know a grandfather i know they could be like paranormal bullies but at the end of the day it was still a human being and i think i treat both the living and the dead with respect that's just my motto and a lot of other people's mottos in the paranormal oh, yeah well we we don't do it because like you said it's very disrespectful and mm -hmm. this person's already gone through the trauma of being dead so uh -huh. why would you want to make it any, any worse? Exactly. And that's just what it comes down to is like, that's the energy you're putting out. So if you're going to be a jerk. You're going to, you're probably going to get some bad energy back at you. So don't, don't put yourself in a bad, vulnerable situation. So make sure you're just always putting out that good white light. Yeah, exactly. Well, you catch more ghosts with honey, right? That's right. <laughs> so has there been any specific team that you, maybe wanted to work with that you haven't got to yet? Um, not off the top of my head, but like, honestly, I'm always down to like, go join an investigation. <laughs> I'd love to join, you know, like Adam and Amy, like 
that would be the funnest thing oh. ever. I just, I love them so much. I've met them a couple times and they're just, they're so great at what they do and it'll be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and what is your views on shadow people? Okay, that is awesome. Um, that is something that definitely has personally affected me my whole life. My childhood home had a shadow person that not only I saw, but my sister and I saw at the same time. Uh, it imitated my father once, and it was I was probably like 16 or 17, and my dad, I use air quotes, walked by me, uh, went up the stairs. I'm like, hey, dad, I'm trying to ask him a question. He just, like, started walking away from me up the stairs. I'm like, okay. And I just, my dad, and I follow him upstairs. And I see him go into my parents' bedroom, and it's, like, pitch dark. And just close the door. I'm like, dad? Then all of a sudden, I hear him from downstairs. What? I'm like, that's not dad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was some shadow person imitating my father. And another time, my sister and I were watching TV, and we both saw, air quotes, my mom walk into the bathroom. And we were like, Mom? Because we thought she had already gone to bed. It was late at night. And she was still in bed. It was not my mom. And we both saw her at the exact same time. And it, it followed me for a few years when I moved to another house. And I would just see it, like, walking back and forth, like, in the reflection of the window. And uh, it wasn't it didn't do any harm, but... Still freaked me out. It was kind of like a buddy of mine, I guess. But um, I don't know. I think we can all kind of tell what the intent is there. Like, I, I never got any negative vibes or anything from it. My fiancé, on the other hand, has had um, bouts of, like, sleep paralysis. And he has had um, experiences with shadow people as well, but not the good kind. And he thought it was very, like, threatening. Like, But I haven't had... I haven't had a shadow person, like, I guess, like, visible um, in a long time. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, Gabriel has sent a message, and he wants to know, um, does she have any contact or heard from any of the people they've helped, and did it help long-term, or has it been any reoccurrences of activity? As far as I know, there has been no reoccurrences. Um I, I do. I'm actually friends with some of the people on Facebook, which is great. I'm getting to stay in contact with people. Um, but what we told them, and I don't know if they ever shared it on camera. I can't remember because just so much was talked about that people didn't get to see, unfortunately. But we would always tell them, like, this isn't, we're not telling you we're here to fix everything. We're not telling you we're banishing people or sending people to the other side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and that everything's going to be better. You're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. What we were there to do is to help equip them, uh, give them the tools and the experience on how to deal with the bad days. You know, if, if energy seems to come back again, that they can look back on those experiences that, hey, I confronted this and I survived and I was able to do it and I can use, you know, not be so afraid and make it worse. Um, but as far as I know, a lot of the places have had really positive outcomes well that's great and I, yeah and I, I would hope that they use that night of tapping into that courage and bravery and tap back into that if they're ever afraid again so when you were filming the show did you ever have somebody that just absolutely refused to go through with with the experiment no actually thank god there was a couple times where like we were we didn't know how people were going to react like I fully expected a couple people to like not want to do it, but these people were rock stars. Honestly, it was amazing to witness people willing to step up and confront literally their biggest fears in a lot of times the place where they sleep and to watch the transformation, especially like when, this, when someone would like start talking to us and immediately her lip would be quivering and shake her voice was shaking. Like she was so afraid not living in her house for six weeks to watch her go from living in fear to this just glow afterwards and her um, just claiming her space back. That was so powerful to witness, to, to watch someone step into their power, to step into their truth and their mightiness. It, it was an honor, truly. So Darren has asked another question. And he wants to know if you had a chance to buy a haunted location or house, what would it be and why? 
I like this one. I think it would be the Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast. It's not bed and breakfast, but uh, it, I'm from Massachusetts, and that's in Fall River, and it's just so it's such an amazing just urban legend because we still don't know what happened. But I would just I would love to just be a part of that history and take it seriously. It, it's it's in such good hands, and if I was if ever had the opportunity to own it and um, treat it with love and respect, I would, that would be awesome. It's just a great, great story. We don't know what happened. And I, yeah, <laughs> that would be amazing to be a part of the history. Have you ever had anybody try to fool you when you were going in for an investigation, you know, tell you something's going on and it really wasn't and they were trying to fake stuff? Um, not during an investigation. Like we've, I've had people just ever since I've been in the paranormal, like I've had some other TV experiences. So like gain some exposure through that. And people will message me, uh, photos that are clearly just ghost app, <laughs> um, <laughs> pictures, but I don't have the heart to tell them. So I'll just be like, wow. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, I haven't had anybody like really trick us, um, or trick me. Um, boo to them if they try to do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just weird like are you that bored <laughs> well you know some people they'll they want you to come check out their place because they're thinking they're going to be famous they're going to be on television uh, and then they, yeah. they especially get upset when you show up and there's no cameras for youtube or for you know travel channel or whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. well we were lucky enough to have an amazing production team that went through an amazing vet. Everyone had to go through like this, a really serious vetting process. And, you know, cause you are going to get the people that just want to be on TV. You are going to get the people that are really making things up. Um, but we, we wanted to find people that really truly needed help that they were turning to the internet as a last resort because they didn't know what the heck to do. It wasn't, they had electricians come out to tell them that everything's fine. They had plumbers, like X, Y, Z, you name it, that and they had nowhere else to turn to. And thank God for our amazing team that found those people. And Gabe asks another question. He wants to know, has anything ever followed you home from one of the show's investigations? That's a great question, and yes. <laughs> um, it actually took me up until like maybe a couple months ago to really shake off um, an investigation from February. The um, John's house down in Georgia, that demon house that I named it, um, mm -hmm. with Karen Calabrese, I think. No, is that the vegan lady? <laughs> um, I forget her last name. I'm totally spacing. Um, but I had, the way I see demons, I think we all see them differently. Um, to me, they appear like black tar figures and I've had like visualization meditation sessions and like, I do light work on myself and I've had instances of like this black tar wrapped around my spine, wrapped around like my heart chakra. And I was doing my fiance and I, like every now and then we do like kind of full moon nights or like just saging nights where we, we sage ourselves and the house, we set intentions, we do like. Uh, we light candles and we kind of like, this is like my little like kind of altar area where I just kind of write down like my wish for the the future and what I'm trying to manifest and just like offering gratitude in return. But while we were meditating, I saw one of those black figures. Um, he was just made of tar, just hovering over um, my like mantle altar area. And he looked back at me and it was just, I knew that's where he was from because I just had this this weight on me ever since that investigation and it just took me a long time I think to come out of it and to feel like yeah you, you know you can tell when something is just not right and energetically and spiritually and emotionally and um yeah it took me a long time to shake that one and I that's coming from somebody who I ground myself I cleanse myself I have stones I have the white light and the visualization and it's just sometimes when you're dealing with, we Bob and I dub it like paranormal radiation. You just can't help but pick up energy. And especially, I think, from all the traveling I was doing, I was just probably really vulnerable. So that was the story of how I brought home a tar demon. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, everybody that's... I, I, I'm going to kind of back I'm sorry, Kyle. No, no, go ahead. Back go ahead. You up on that tar demon. Uh, I have not actually, well, I've seen it myself, but not as in the same setting that you have seen. Um, a lot of the listeners know about some of my background, how I was raised. I was raised from Pew, Pentecostal Evangelical Christian Church, mm. speaking in tongues, dancing in the spirit, baptisms, all the, the whole nine. And, um, Wow. Over the years of growing up, I'm seeing people that are possessed. There's no way the way they're acting, what they're saying, and I know these people personally, there's no freaking way that can survive banging their head on a low pile carpet directly over concrete for 10 mm -hmm. minutes and only have a little red spot on their forehead uh, without having any type of concussion. Well, one particular time when they were casting out of demons... Uh, I was throwing up some stuff, and he was he was possessed, and he was growling. He was saying some weird language, which no, yeah, he was he would mentally he would never have been able to do that mm -hmm. uh, or understand that language. When he was throwing up, it was black tar that he mm -hmm. was doing that, and we're talking, I don't know, between five to ten minutes of solid throwing up without even having him to breathe and it just is a big black tar blob that he did and after he got all of that out of him he was this whole another person and uh when you mentioned that i was like holy crap you're the only other person that i've actually heard mention describe it like that and uh, i just got chills yeah, man that's I, said, yeah, I, did the, I did the same thing every time i think about it um and, and and that's also of course that got me really into it and i didn't have my first experience until i was 30 years ago in high school wow. but uh yeah when you mentioned that i was like yeah i've seen that before and it's na it's nasty it's it pretty is. nasty scary yucky stuff and it it smells it it reeks yeah, yeah i it's weird like I, I i saw this stuff wrapped around my spine once in a visualization and i had to do some serious like 10 20 straight minutes of like like having it like spin like imagining the white light around it and spin off and like it would splatter but like come back but like i finally got it off and it formed into three tar faced demons like just staring at me and like grinning and then like i just visualize visualize shooting white light at them and they kind of just dissipate and they're fine but it's bizarre and i feel like through ghost bait because of like the regular um investigations my my just intuitive awareness is like, boom. And I can just see when people have the tar attached to them, even if it's just a little bit and they're inviting this darkness into their life what, like, very unconsciously. And like, I even have family members that are dealing with like alcohol issues and I can just see in their eyes. I'm like, I was sending white light to people and them and they were there and I couldn't because they were surrounded by tar and I could just see my like, they got attachments and it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, it, yeah, it is. So everybody Sorry. that's <laughs> everybody that's listening, I hope you have pen and paper handy. If not, go get it. We're going to be giving you some information at the end, and I'd love for you to to write it down. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, um, you were talking about things being attached. Um, we used to live in Laporte, Texas. And before I met Michelle, I had an incident where I th thought that I was hearing voices in my head and they were telling me to do things that, you know, like to hurt myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on, and I mind you, I went, I had went to a, a mental hospital the whole nine yards, spent a couple of weeks in there getting medications, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And later on, we started having paranormal things happen in the house. And we had, we have a, uh, a psychic medium that works with us. Mm -hmm. She came in and because we lived right down the street from a cemetery, said so things were always coming through and visiting. And more than likely mm -hmm. the voices I was hearing was these spirits. And mind you, they didn't stick around, but we had a lot of neat stuff that happened while we were there. So, yeah, wow. I get where you're coming from. Yeah, there's definitely, like, that blend of um, what we're experiencing. I think 
clinically people will try to um, explain it away with science, but they don't, they're, they're voiding themselves of the a spiritual um, explanation as well. I think there's a, a healthy marriage between both. And I definitely look back on my deepest bouts of um, depression and experiencing things as well. And I have experience being um, in the group like home program as well when I'm dealing with my issues. And um, I definitely look back and that was when I was so vulnerable in the paranormal. I was not cleansing myself. I was not honoring my own energy and I was not filling my 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 thoughts my my spiritual energy with happy positive things and I wasn't working on myself and that's that, that's definitely going to lead to uh like spiritual darkness in your life definitely leave you vulnerable to like all the energy that's around you and all the spirits so it's that's pretty wild about the the cemetery and of course you'd experience something like that so do you have that one go-to thing that for protection yes i um i envision just like the heavens above me like uh the clouds part and like this big column of white light drops down to me and i always have it come from above and i'm surrounded in this white light bubble um and i have it change colors a lot of times like just have it like go through the rainbow kind of like all your chakras <laughs> and um i just picture that like around me like a little eggshell <laughs> and nothing can hurt it and I can send out beams of light to the people like on my crew the team the people I love just I, I envelop the world in it and I just always just like I'm constantly giving love and love and love and light and that's that's what's been working for me well I have my talismans but my wife has that ability to project protection around us and I have to keep telling her stop doing that to me nothing's happening <laughs> <laughs> and I have, I have um, a bag of like stones and crystals with me as well and I don't know the names of all of them but I just like to pick up one that um, I'm drawn to for that investigation but I'm actually holding one while we're talking as well just to channel some like good positive and I always just ask to be protected and use me as a vessel for love and light and guide my words and just let it be you have to protect yourself from the demons known as Kyle and Rodney. Yes, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no you guys are awesome. This has been, like, so much fun. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. So I was going to bring up something to you. I had a quote-unquote discussion with uh, somebody in my family the other day, and they were trying to tell me that because there's so much radiation that's in the air all the time going around that that's what's making our equipment go off. What do, what do you think about that? Hmm. I think, let's see, if that was the case, then it would constantly be going off. Thank you. You know, I, I think, yes, there's definitely electro, electromagnetic fields out there. Now we're dealing with, like, the 5G coming out and there's Wi-Fi. But at the same time, if I'm seeing something, I just get touched and then the equipment goes off. Explain that to me, please. Explain why I'm capturing a thermal image of a perfect apparition of a body, like right there in cold temperature. Um, it, there's just, there's inconsistencies. And obviously, like, I don't, I'm not an expert on electromagnetic fields. Like, I don't know if they're constant or if there's waves of them, but I feel like when we, when you test a house for, um, whether it's like copper wiring or the boiler or something like you get a constant read on it and it's going to, it's never going to fluctuate. It's always at that number, whatever it may be. Um, when you're just standing in the middle of a forest, it's, there's going to be like natural electromagnetic fields, but not enough that your equipment's going to pick up. That's just my two cents. That's... I mean, I'm, I don't claim to be a scientist, but that's just from what I little understood. Well, one thing that we do when we first go in, well, let's just say this. We always go in with a bit of skepticism. We try to find out what is a natural reason why these things are happening. Yes. It's very healthy. You have to do that. Exactly. Yeah. And number two, of course, we do a sweep through the house, like with the K2. And, yeah. you know, you can usually tell if there's, you know, a television or a computer or refrigerator mm -hmm. or something that it's going to have higher EMF readings come off of it. But right. then we find those spots that there's nothing. And you sit there and you ask questions, and then all of a sudden, boom, the thing goes off. 
<laughs> exactly. You're getting a direct response to a question. There's nothing more interactive <laughs> and intelligent than that. I want him to explain why EVPs happen. <laughs> oh, that's just a bizarre thing. I can't believe, like, I can't believe, when you really think about it, like, take yourself out of the paranormal for a second. We capture voices. We ask questions and we get responses. How amazing is that? And I, I just, I would hope that everybody in at least once in their life can experience getting a class A EVP. It's beyond mind blowing and so special whenever that happens. So when we're done yeah, the, this the, evening. The hours of sitting in, the, yeah, the hours of sitting in the dark talking and talking and talking to yourself and you get that one <laughs> EVP all I know. the or just the water. The rest of yeah, the night. They're like, oh my God, let's do this. Let's go over here. Oh yeah, it's amazing. That's what. That's why I love burst sessions. I like. I don't leave my recorder on because I don't know if I move or whatever. So I do like the five minute little burst session and then call it a day. Not call it a day, but I do like multiple on an investigation. Yeah. It's just easier because then I'll be like, oh yeah, I moved weird and or I used to capture like weird voices and it would just be my, my throat <laughs> making a weird noise or, or your stomach uh, hurting stomach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rodney farting ghost farts ghost farts there you go. Ooh, what's that smell <laughs> so so sulfur it's a demon, demon. <laughs> <laughs> <That's hilarious>. Jinx! <laughs> oh my god! So whenever we're this done talking same, later, these are the uh, same. Yeah, this is the same people that were talking about like <laughs> freaking. Hey, let's do drunk paranormal. Hey, let's do naked paranormal. It's like, hey, oh lord. That's our I idea. Paranormal, but, yeah, paranormal and alcohol. <laughs> no. It already lowers your vibration. You don't. You don't want to lower your vibration at all. Like going we'll into this stuff. We'll have designated investigators too. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Rodney, you take over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am. Mean, yeah, I'll be the one sober too. One talk yeah, over the line, sweet Jesus. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so anyway, when we get done talking later, um, we have a video we'd like to send you and get your take on it. Definitely. So I'll yeah. send it to you on Facebook because that's the only way I can send it. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. So. I'm excited. I love people share evidence. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Miss Tina, tell everybody how they can reach you on social media and on your YouTube and all that good stuff. Of course. So, all like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's all at uh, Tina Store. Very simple. I'm. Um, really mostly active on Instagram. I think that if you want to reach me quickly, I get a lot of DMs. So I'm so sorry if I don't respond right away, but I'm all over the place and I'm going to be sharing a lot of my manifestation, my positive, like personal development, um, content on Instagram. And, um, my fiance and I, we have a YouTube channel, the adventures of John, no H and bean. That's actually my nickname. So y'all can call me bean if you want. Um, we do a lot of like movie reviews and pop culture topics and we're, we write sketch comedy and we're also musicians. So going to be doing a lot more. Um, I'm a singer. So put more content like that out on our YouTube and social media. Um, and I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's all the social media I have. Yeah. Twitter. I'm not really on Twitter that much, but um, Instagram and Facebook. Tina store. So Find me. Let's connect. John with no H, because H is John with no H. <laughs> yeah. And he's a different man without the H. Trust me. <laughs> you ever watch Jimmy Fallon? No, I do like, like Jimmy cute. Fallon, yeah. I love I will catch up on like YouTube or something. But yeah. he's, he's so funny. Yeah. I saw his um I did the NBC studio tour last year when I first moved here. I'm like, Jimmy Fallon I got to see his studio, it was awesome. I'm like, someday I wanna be on there. It's like a goal of mine to be a guest. Oh, <laughs> Because yeah, H's are ill. <laughs> ill. Oh my God, like ill. <laughs> oh, there's many voices in here too. I'm like, I do like, I want to do cartoons and all that stuff. Oh boy. I'm a, I'm a ball of weirdness. <laughs> so we were in FYE the other day and there was uh, him and, uh, is it, was it, it's him and, and um, 
Just Justin Timberlake that do the the, oh the box. God. Yes. They actually had a pop figure of both of them. <laughs> that's amazing. I just, that is so freaking, that's a great sketch. That's so funny. So you know you've made it when you have a pop figure made of you. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Or a meme, like I, the meme culture, like that you've lived on forever. <laughs> See, that's what we, we should write into Funko and tell them they need to make pops of all of our paranormal people. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, paranormal pops. They need to do that. We have to have our own. You guys got to do it. Get on it. Come on. Okay. There's money here. I <laughs> got a percentage. Right. That's freaking awesome. I, I know, Pops. You know, we got to definitely have to trade on that I one. am That's emailing amazing. as we speak. <laughs> Michelle is emailing as we speak. <laughs> Dear Franco. <laughs> That's awesome. The first one That's has amazing. to be Jason and Grant. Oh, yeah. I want a Scott Grenwald one. That would be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Give him, like, pink pants. I want Chad Lindbergh. <laughs> Love him. He's going to be on the show in, uh, not too long. Oh, God. Okay, I will definitely be tuning in. Love that guy to death. He is just a ball of... He's a breath of fresh air. Oh, he's yeah. Awesome. He's a great guy. His, uh -huh. his assistant is awesome, too. She is funny. She's great. <laughs> so, thank you so, so much for agreeing to do this. We were so excited and... Uh, yeah. Well, thank you. I, I was so excited to be asked to, to come on here. You guys are great. This has been awesome. Oh. Anytime, I'm, I would love to come back. So. Oh, well, you know what? You <laughs> should come on and be a, a guest host. I would love that, but we'll have to plan something. That'll be a lot of fun. Well, okay. we've got some pretty big names coming up uh, soon, and uh, I won't mention them because you never okay. know what can happen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Next week is Jan Harzen, the director of MUFON. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that, but I will look it up. Send me the info. That's the Mutual <laughs> yeah. UFO Network. Mutual UFO. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he's the you director. You love aliens. Have you seen the Bob Luzar? Um, is it Luzar? Luzan? Um, he was on Joe Rogan, and he has a great documentary. I'll have to share it on my story or something on Instagram. It's so good if you're into aliens and UFOs. Oh, yeah. Well, and conspiracy theories. We're into everything cryptid, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anything and everything. Oh, yeah. That just umbrella, the paranormal, everything. Yes. <laughs> you know, even if I'm, if I'm not really into it or if I don't, you know, go out and investigate it, I still am interested. I love to hear what people have to say. Agreed. Okay. Uh, Agreed. Okay. It's like maybe like all conspiracy theories and like give me everything. <laughs> I will tell you, family, I have family that live in Roswell, New Mexico. Yes. They born and raised. I've been out there so many times as a kid. That uh -huh. hangar that that was supposed to be the UFO thing, and it's an abandoned Air Force base now, but they still have armed military guarding mm. that particular hangar for some reason to this day. And it was oh, the same parking lot that Elvis's last plane that Elvis owned before he passed away was out there also at the same time. So I'm not joking. I'm dead. That's awesome. I don't know what was going on. Maybe Elvis was. We'll never know. Alien. Yeah. Elvis was an alien, and so are you, Rodney. Yes, I am. <laughs> Are we all technically? We're all star yeah. stuff. <laughs> yes, we're all born star. All I've said uh, from the beginning was that if aliens ever come back to visit, I'm jumping on board and leaving this place. Yes, take me to your leader. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Vita Zane. <laughs> well, as always, everyone, uh, we ask that you would join the Paranormal Bully Busters. You get involved by visiting uh, stompoutbullying.org, or you can call 877-NO-BULLY. That's 877-662-8559. Uh, buy their merchandise. The proceeds go to expanding the reach of the resources and also allows them to run their 24-hour helplines. And also, you can follow us on Instagram at into underscore the underscore. Get ready for it, P period. I period, T period, T period, underscore. you find us at the same address on Twitter. And on Facebook, we're Pit Paranormal Investigators. That's two Ts. 
and go to teespring.com backslash shop backslash p dash i dash t dash t dash stop plus ah, i can breathe now ah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you and i did it without stumbling over my words <laughs> and thank you so much tina we appreciate you being on the show thanks to everyone that listens you know darren gabriel matt the uh, the whole gang we appreciate all of you being so loyal and listening each week all to also to our new listeners out there feel free to chime in in the chat room anytime and y'all have a wonderful and blessed oh boy thank you for joining us on into the pit Please follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network and Instagram at The Vibes Broadcast.